We've come to the last section of the course. Uh, this, uh, at this stage, we're going to talk about how uh, higher level languages like Java are implemented in computer systems. And uh, we're going to leverage the knowledge we have about how things are done using C, uh, what we focused on uh, as our language so far. So we're going to start that process by uh, going back to the very beginning and sort of replaying the course at a much faster pace. And now just talk about how uh, data representations, pointers and references, uh, procedures or methods in the case of Java are represented in, uh, in this higher level language. And we're also going to talk a little bit about uh, virtual machines, a special runtime system we use for languages like Java. Uh, which are interpreted and not compiled directly. So uh, we're going, as I said, we're going to do this really quick this time uh, because we have a lot more background to uh, base things on now. So um, let's uh, start turning our attention to Java. Uh, before we do that, just to make a meta point about this uh, uh, this lecture is none of the things we're going to talk about here are guaranteed by Java. What we're doing here is uh, just trying to understand one implementation of a higher level language uh, so we can get a sense for what the basic underlying concepts are, uh, useful ways to think about uh, our programs and uh, what is going on underneath. But none of, none of what you hear uh, in, these, in this set of videos in this section uh, should you take to be the gospel truth about uh, a particular implementation. Let's begin by looking at how data is represented in Java. Uh, integers, floats, uh, doubles, all those things, uh, all those numbers that we were looking at before at the beginning of the course in C are represented exactly the same way in Java. Uh, there's no differences there. And yes, uh, Java has pointers as well. Uh, however, there are some differences there. Uh, in Java, pointers are referred to as references, and they're not quite as general as uh, C pointers are. Uh, remember, with C, we could point to any byte in memory, any arbitrary address. We'll see that in Java, our references are always pointing to the start of an object, the start of a data structure. Um, so not quite as general as uh, C pointers. Uh, just like in C, null is, is typically represented as a zero. Uh, and we're going to review characters and strings, arrays, and objects. So let's start. Uh, with looking at characters and strings in Java, uh, the first thing uh, to, to note is that uh, the character set that uh, Java uses uh, has two bytes per character rather than one. Rather than using the Latin alphabet focused ASCII encoding, uh, we use uh, two byte Unicode characters, which uh, allow us to represent many more of the world's uh, alphabets. So it's much more general, modern uh, uh, computer code for. Uh, all the character sets that are out there. So uh, the other difference is that unlike in C where strings are bounded by a special byte that has a null or a zero in it, uh, as in this example here, you'll notice the strings ends when we hit the zero. Um, we don't know in advance how long the string is going to be. We often have to read the entire string and keep checking every byte as we read it to know when we get to the end. Uh, when we get to that zero. On the other hand, in Java, the first four bytes are an integer that has the length of the string represented as, uh, as a number. Uh, in this case, the number six for the six pairs of Unicode bytes uh, for the six characters in CSC uh, 3551. Okay, so uh, with uh, with Java, at the very beginning, we know the length of the string already. That first thing we read is an integer that tells us how long it is and how far we'll need to go. The same approach uh, carries through into arrays. Uh, you'll notice that arrays in Java have uh, an integer at the very beginning that tells us how many elements there are in the array. Another difference in arrays in Java is that they're already initialized to zero. Uh, and unlike in C where the array is placed at some locations in memory and its starting values are whatever was there, whatever bits were currently at those memory locations. Uh, instead, in Java, uh, there's a special effort made to put zeros there to start so that we know that whenever we read a value for the first time, it will in fact be a zero. Uh, that nice uh, first value there, uh, the length of the array, 
is accessed by a special method called uh, length uh, that we can call on the array, uh, and that will return the value of that field so that at any time we can find out how big this array is. Um, and why is that there? What can that do for us? Well, uh, what's, what happens in Java is every time we access an array, every time we index an array, uh, we actually uh, go and take, you know, in this case, for example, let's say we had written array 3, uh, we will actually go and take that value uh, 3 and compare it against this one uh, stored at the very first uh, position in the object and make sure that we're not addressing a location that's out of bounds, uh, a, an element of the array uh, that is actually defined. Uh, in this case, 3 is uh, definitely OK. It really corresponds to this element right here. And uh, we can go ahead and read that. If we had put a 7 here, uh, then that would have been somewhere out here uh, in C, and we would have just generated an, an address and read whatever was at that memory location. In Java, on the other hand, we compare that 7 against the 5 and say, well, we're clearly out of bounds. Let's throw an exception and, uh, and cause the program to stop because we're clearly addressing something uh, in an incorrect way. So this is uh, uh, one nice advantage of writing Java programs, that we get these extra bound checks for free. That means that there's extra code executing that we didn't bother to write to check that bound, uh, but was inserted for us automatically uh, in the Java implementation uh, to do that bounds checking. OK, let's uh, take a look at data structures uh, in Java, or objects, uh, as they're referred to. Uh, the difference between uh, structs in C and, and objects in Java is that objects can only include uh, primitive data types, not uh, composite data types. So for example, you'll remember you, maybe this example that we used before. Here we have a struct that has an integer as its first element, and then an array of three ints as its second element. That's not a primitive uh, structure or primitive data type. That's a composite data type. It actually consists of three integers. And then uh, another primitive data type that is uh, a pointer. Okay? Um, when we access these in C, what we can do is allocate some space for, uh, for the, the struct, uh, get a pointer to that region of memory, and then we can refer to it uh, using that arrow notation, which says, hey, take that pointer, dereference it, offset by the amount that you need to offset to get to the various pieces uh, of, the, of the struct and assign a new value to them. And you notice that we can uh, not only reference A, but we can reference an element within A and assign a value to one element of the array. Uh, here we're assigning an address of another struct uh, to that pointer. Okay. So in memory, this looks like an integer followed by three more integers that represent the array, A, and then another four bytes that are the pointer uh, that is the third element. Let's see what that looks like in Java. You'll notice that in Java, yes, we do have the integer as the first element and the reference to uh, another uh, object, a, a, a pointer-like thing, as the third element. But in the middle, we don't have the actual array of three integers. We have a pointer to a new structure that is an array of three integers. So rather than actually representing the three integers there, we uh, actually just represent a pointer to the array. So uh, to let's just take a look at that map. So here in this case, our memory has our four-byte integer at the beginning our four-byte pointer to an array, and another four-byte uh, reference uh, to another object. So that pointer A is not the actual array, but rather points off to a region of memory where the array is stored. Here are the three ints, but remember they're preceded by the length of the array. So there's an extra integer there at the beginning uh, that tells us how many elements there are to this array. And when we reference them, in code, uh, 
when we reference the struct in code, you'll notice there's a slightly different syntax. We don't bother doing those that malloc uh, to call the memory allocation routine to get us a space in memory. We use the keyword new, which uh, is actually something that does the malloc for us and creates a new space in memory. In this case, two new spaces in memory, one for the first level of the uh, struct, and then uh, one for one of the com another area for the composite data type that makes up that struct, that extra array that has to be uh, created. And it initializes these, this pointer to point to that array. The references to the elements are very similar to what we did in C, but you'll notice that we change the notation a little bit. Instead of the arrow, we just use the dot. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit shorter, easier to read. And uh, since we're always using a reference that's to the start of an object, uh, we implicitly do the dereference. So we don't bother with that extra step and can just use the dot notation. All right, so you've seen uh, a little bit about these pointers. Let's see uh, what that implications that has. So a pointer in C, again, can point to any memory address. In, in Java, though, it can only point to the beginning of an object. Uh, only its first element. Not, it cannot point to the middle of it. So what implications does this have? Well, you, here's our struct again. Uh, and you'll notice here we're calling a function with one element of the array that makes up that struct. And we can do that with a single expression. We go uh, to that struct, look at its uh, A array, and then the second element of that array, and the address uh, of that element and can pass that on to the function. So in this case, what we're doing is passing a pointer to that function some fun as an argument. Uh, and that, ar uh, that argument points to a particular integer in the middle of that array. In Java, we can't do that. Remember, our pointers, our references can only go to the beginning of an object. So we actually have to specify it in two parts. First, we have to say uh, the array address and then which element of the array because uh, we, we can't point to the middle of the array directly. So remember that's what our struct looks like uh, in uh, our object looks like in memory, these two discontiguous parts and we cannot generate a pointer to the middle of that array. Uh, so the way we have to do it is by pointing first to the array by getting that uh, pointer stored at this location and then uh, providing an index that tells us uh, which element of the array we want. And that index will be compared against uh, the length of the array and checked for us uh, to make sure that we're not overstepping uh, the bounds. 